I got invited to play the Skull and Bones open beta, and I wasn't able to participate. ING says it looks good, but I've seen a lot of criticism about it, which is fair. It is the first beta, but we're going to have to get in there to see what is actually going on. I don't know what you expected. The game has gone back and forth several times in development. It is supposed to be based off of the naval combat of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which I think has never changed. That's supposed to be the focus from its very foundation because that was a satisfying combat style. I think the overall game has been very clouded by its development cycle and how much it's changed direction. And with this open beta, I think they're going to finally be locked into the direction they want to go. So it will either continue down that path and be good or not. I think a lot of criticism in the open beta makes a lot of sense. It is the first beta, the first access. So they're going to have things that they want to fix. But we'll we'll see what ING has to say about it. It's no secret that Ubisoft's seafaring pirate game Skull and Bones, which was first revealed way back in 2017, has endured a troubled development. Originally conceived as an expansion to Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, then an MMO spin-off, and finally an independent project that suffered numerous delays, it's understandable so for many players delays. to be concerned about the upcoming action game where naval like that is the one thing that's concerned me so much is that it was announced so long ago off of a premise that I really liked the naval combat of black sails and it's delayed, delayed, changed, delayed. And like, I'm very concerned about what the final product's going to be because they haven't been clear on this. But again, now that we're in beta, I think that they're going to have to solidify their direction and we might actually start seeing what the game's supposed to be. Warfare and piracy are placed front and center. This but combat. after numerous hours sunk into the recent closed beta, I'm happy to report that I came away from the experience much more confident that we'll be getting a worthy successor to Black Flag's awesome buccaneering ways. With a much more interesting story than I was expecting, some really appetizing RPG systems in place, and okay. smooth and entertaining naval combat, Skull and Bones is looking... See, that naval combat is what excited me the most because I really enjoyed the naval sections of Assassin's Creed Black Flag. They were absolutely amazing. This combat looks very different to a certain degree, but also probably has the a similar feel. Like, obviously, I'm on the ship and it's a different perspective, but it looks like the aiming mechanisms and kind of the way you utilize different weapons may be the Looking same. pretty darn fun as it prepares to finally set sail at long last. Oh, come to loot my cabin, you filthy scrag. Following up on the success of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag from way back in 2013, Skull and Bones yeah, is an open forever. world tactical action game where you play as a pirate set loose on the high seas during the tactical golden age of piracy RPG. and unfettered capitalism. After suffering defeat at the hands of some water narcs and finding myself washed ashore, my journey of notoriety started from humble beginnings aboard a piece of okay. glorified driftwood, all nice. the way to a massive ship with enough cannons to fight off an army. The story placed me in the Indian See, Ocean. I like that. Where I that is one thing that I never really liked about Black Sail is I was never allowed to move up into bigger ships. The fact that I can upgrade, improve, and build into bigger classes of ships is a huge step in the right direction based off of the Black Sails background. ...of pirate legend John Spurlock and began running jobs in my pursuit of wealth and power. I'll admit that I expected very little from the story, but was pleasantly surprised by the memorable cast of characters and extensive dialogue in between action-packed stretches of robbery and oceanic misdeeds. We must start taking matters into our own hands. Much more interesting, though, were the shockingly deep RPG progression systems, which okay. included survival game elements that had me collecting raw materials to build my ships and an extensive so loadout system where I could customize every... I can see where you might want to do that from the land, but doing it from the ship is probably, I don't know, just 
just as good and the it again it focuses on keeping you on the sea and using the sea as your open world to navigate and explore. Every aspect of my vessel, from function to cosmetics, including designating my very own lemur co-captain to the ship, which lemur. is obviously... Can I have a capuchin? I want a capuchin, though. Lemurs are cool. Capuchins are better. And capuchins have better attitudes, you know? ...the most important part. Unlocking new Look, schematics to build what more powerful more ships, for? different varieties can of cannon, and other game-changing add-ons and accessories became an absolute obsession. And I poured all the silver and ill-gotten booty I could into turning my ship into the ultimate tool of destruction. There's nice. a dizzying amount of unlockables and configuration that goes into each vessel, and I could see myself easily losing many more hours optimizing my tools of the trade. I saw your ship's got nothing sticking out of her gum ports. Beyond that, I also spent See, a fair so, bit of like, time in We do know you go on land, but it may only be in these ports and cities that you do anything on the land. I don't think you're going to be like running around like Sea of Thieves and unburying hidden treasure on the land. It doesn't seem like that's a mechanic at all, but you are going to visit these cities, walk around the cities, buy stuff and customize through the city options. So there is some land gameplay, but I don't think it's going to be combat focused or anything that is major where you want to sink a lot of time on the land. ...on my pirate captain's appearance. And while the starting options during the beta weren't terribly extensive, years of playing Sea of Thieves has taught me the importance of striking fear into the hearts of my enemies by looking as intimidating as possible. Of course, the crown jewel of Skull and Bones is in its naval combat, and like Black Flag before it, this game seems to absolutely nail that element, even in this early uh, beta that's phase. Because I had to place different weapons game. on different sides of my ship, mobility was key to winning the day, as I could fire from one end of the ship, then rotate to unload a different cannon while the first one was being reloaded by my crew. Watching a ship sink down to Davy Jones in a massive fiery explosion is a sight to behold, and jumping aboard a weakened enemy ship awarded some much appreciated extra loot. I also enjoyed nice. just how brutally difficult my adventures on the high sea could be, with different areas locked at different difficulties, meaning a voyage too far into uncharted waters could leave me pursued Bite by a ship far beyond chew. my capabilities, or stuck in a thunderstorm that could spell my imminent demise. This formula was especially exciting when played among friends, and having up to two of my most trusted despoilers join me in a bit of piracy made for some like wonderful that. added chaos. Co-play. You can have a mini fleet with you and your friends. That's always a good thing. I like that the areas are segregated so that you have clear areas of harder challenges. That is a good mechanic. It gives you something to strive for and you're building and development. I can't wait till I can take out this known boss and, you know, get your friends in there. You do it a little bit earlier with good coordination and fleet tactics. My favorite activity was plundering, where my friends and I attacked a settlement from the coastline, then held off waves of increasingly challenging enemy ships as we accumulated loot. I'm not surprised that Skull and Bones See, that seems like it's going to... So you accumulate loot, does that mean you just send off crew and you never go? Or is one of the friends or partners actually on the land clearing out the area? That's a question. I'm willing to bet it's kind of the former where you have people on land, but you're not one of them, nor is one of your friends. It's all just AI or a time system where your crew is on the land and you're fighting off the waves in order to provide them protection to get the goods. Pull off ship to ship combat so well given its black flag origins but I'm Doesn't definitely seem like surprised anyone's in the it town. seems like it might well, actually no, blow it out of the water right there. with interesting activities and a much so, needed co-op component. After a good chunk of climbing the ranks of notoriety in Skull and Bones' beta, I'm more excited to dive into the full experience than I was even way back when it was announced at E3 all those years ago. Here's I was super it'll excited, it safely with, excited when it got the announced, months. but they haven't done For anything more, big since. check sense. out our preview of Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden, or our recent hands-on with the PlayStation Portal. And for everything else, keep nah. hunting for buried treasure I'm with not gonna IGN. Look, at those. look, it's IGN. Like them, love them, hate them, whatever. Doesn't matter. They gave a review. They said some things. 
I think that the game looks good. I do. I've been excited about it. I really enjoyed and connected with the naval combat in Black Sails. And if that alone is the basis of the game and it delivers on that feel, then I'm okay with it. Now, I have seen criticism of the game as well. I've seen opposing views. So some people have talked about how the weapons are too futuristic. There's a lot of inconsistencies with the theme of being set in a certain era. But again, this is beta. You're not getting everything. I've heard that it has an interesting story and I've heard it has no story to speak of. How much are they giving you access to in the beta is a big question, right? Mischief says without the ground gameplay, Black Flag would be have been trash. I don't necessarily agree with that. I really enjoyed my time on the sea and I focused on the sea and I kind of advanced the story on ground just because it gave me more access to the sea. I think that it has aspects that you want to upgrade and spend time in harbors and look for things off of the land, but I don't know how much you're going to spend on the ground. And I don't think the game is meant to be that. And I completely understand if you're not going to like the game because it has no ground hand to hand combat. That's not what the game is about. And games shouldn't be made for everyone. I've said this before, like, Games should have a target audience, and if you want to live your life on the sea, sailing a ship and fighting in naval combat, and that is the focus of the game, and you're not going to win everyone because of that focus, that is fine. That doesn't make the game trash. It makes it not for you. That's that's all there is to it. It looks like they're finally getting into the point of development where the game is solidified, the direction is set, and everyone is going to know what the game is going to deliver on and it's not going to be for everyone but i think it is for me i can't wait till it comes out and i want to get access to it to make the final decision for myself because i think it looks good but i won't know how engaging it is until i actually start diving into it and subscribe do this stuff you want all that all of that hey there it's skeg broggy thanks for watching the video and if you enjoyed it please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and follow me here on Twitch for more awesome content. Link is in the description.